Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Friday Ramblings. It's time for some March Madness. We got the green. We got the shaved chin for spring. And we are ready to bust out a whole new set of great videos for you. We're going to start with something a little different in that it's kind of an odd concept to explain even for pro wrestling fans. But we're going to try our best to do so right here today as we do we're going to discuss the j crown also known as the j crown octuple unified championship this was a both a championship and kind of a concept thing Spearheaded by New Japan Pro Wrestling in 1996. The idea behind it was to take eight of the um, lesser titles that were used in a few different Japan and Mexican promotions. Mostly focused on the uh, light heavyweight, cruiserweight level wrestlers in order to create something new and innovative and potentially much more prestigious than any of the individual titles. The old line about uh, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, I think is how that phrase goes, but that's the basic ideas. By creating one super thing out of eight parts, see, eight parts, and one super thing, it would bring a lot more attention to the, the wrestlers involved and the, as I said, the, these being the smaller wrestlers and specifically some of these less, lesser known, don't wanna say less important, but lesser known promotions than simply having a show where all the belts got defended in classical style would have been. So laying all that on down, let's get to the nitty gritty. Now, as we said, the J-Crown was a unification of eight different championship belts, including ones from both Japan and Mexico. The tournament to crown the first champion was held over four nights from August 2nd to August 5th, the same dates that New Japan Pro Wrestling's annual G1 Climax event took place, an already established big name prestigious tournament, promoting both tournaments on the one tour. Now let's get to the fun part and see which belts were involved. We're going to jump around a little bit here because I'm going in a little bit different flow than your usual notes and articles on this will go. The eight title that's involved and the eight champions involved because that's what this was all about. Basically a tournament of champions where when you lose, you lose your championship, which means at the end, one man would hold all eight. Look, so many fingers, we can't even fit it on the screen. Sounds insane, doesn't it? Just the thing alone, nobody had ever tried this before in wrestling. To have eight champions all competing in a tournament where not just the title they had coming in would be on the line in their match, but if they make it to the next round, and then the third round, the titles they freshly won would still be defended. So you have one grand champion, the king of kings, the master of masters. First up, we have the British Commonwealth Junior Heavyweight Championship, which at the time was under the control of Michinoku Pro Wrestling and was held by Jushin Thunder Liger, or Liger. Either way, a true Hall of Famer. 
The IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship from New Japan Pro Wrestling held by another great icon in the great Sasuke. The NWA World Junior Heavyweight Championship, which was still under the general control of the NWA, the National Wrestling Alliance, and was currently being held by Japanese professional wrestler Masayoshi Motiji. Of course, by 1996, the NWA had lost a lot of their presti prestige following the WCW departure from the NWA, so you can see why they were definitely willing to jump in on anything like this. The NWA World Welterweight Championship, which was used by CMLL, aka Consejo Mundiale de Lucha Libre, from Mexico, of course, held by Negro Casas. The UWA World Junior Light Heavyweight Championship, under the controls of the UWA, another Mexican promotion, held by Japanese wrestler Shinjiro Otani. The WAR International Junior Heavyweight Championship, held by WAR, aka Wrestle Association R, or as it was originally established, Wrestle and Romance. It was an oddball little promotion we'll have to discuss someday in much more detail, held by all-time great Ultimo Dragon. The WWA Junior WWA World Junior Light Heavyweight Championship, under the control of Mexican promotion WWA, aka the World Wrestling Association, held by Gran Hamada who, of course, is not only an all-time great, but whose children would continue to stretch on the Hamada legacy to new generations. Finally, the original WWF Light Heavyweight Championship, which was, while technically owned by the World Wrestling Federation, competed for almost exclusively in Mexico and Japan. Um... Specifically, Michinoku Pro Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling, currently held by El Samurai. And that is your tournament of champions here. So how did this initial tournament shake down? Well, in the quarterfinals, Great Sasuke pinned Masayoshi Moteji. El Samurai pinned Grand Hamada. Ultimo Dragon pinned Jushin Thunder Liger, and Shinjiro Otani pinned Negro Casas. In the semifinals, the Great Sasuke pinned El Samurai, and Ultimo Dragon pinned Shinjiro Otani, leading to the finals in which the Great Sasuke pinned the Ultimate Dragon to become the first J-Crown champion and the holder of all eight belts. This would all conclude on August 5th, 1996 in Tokyo, Japan. He would hold the J crown for 67 days before at the Osaka Crush Night, a uh, war event held in Osaka, Ultimo Dragon would defeat him. Now, here's where things get a little extra fun. If you played close attention or a thumbnail, you would see not only is that a picture of Ultimo Dragon, but he has more Nate belts on him. That is because during his reign, Ultimo Dragon had also had captured the NWA World Middleweight Championship um, under the control of the NWA. And... Subsequently, the WCW Cruiserweight Championship, meaning that he had 10 actively defended titles in his possession at once, which is why that is perhaps the greatest thumbnail, JPEG, picture, whatever your preferred nomenclature is, in professional wrestling history, as this makes him the most 
decorated wrestler in recorded history and is a record that still stands due to the fact that he didn't just hold all 10 titles simultaneously, they were all considered actively defended. This is why we love Ultima. Well, that and he's invented a couple pro wrestling moves that have become highly used all over the world, but we'll get to Ultimo another episode. Unfortunately, 85 days later, Jushin Thunder Liger would defeat Ultimo for the J Crown. Note this did not include the two extra belts, as while Ultimo had them and defended them, while being the J-Crown champion, he did not officially absorb them into the J-Crown. Jushin Thunder Liger would be your longest reigning champion at 183 days. However, there is a little tweak to that. Now, Jushin Thunder Liger won this at, on January 4th, 1997 at the Wrestling World event. In Tokyo, Japan, which was a New Japan Pro Wrestling show, and is part of their long running January 4th Dome shows, which are currently promoted under the Wrestle Kingdom banner. Yes, the Wrestle Kingdom history actually stretches back to before it was called Wrestle Kingdom history. Again, that is definitely something for another episode because. For those of you who are not aware, the January 4th show is New Japan's equivalent of WrestleMania. It is their biggest show of the year. However, they had some odd naming conventions for it in its early periods before settling on Wrestle Kingdom. Still, what makes this important is that on June 6th of 1997, Jushin Thunder Liger would defend the War International Junior Heavyweight Championship as an individual against Yuji Yasuraoki and Liger lost, which split that belt off from the J-Crown, which meant it was now represented by seven championships, not eight. This new seven-belt version was then won a month later in at a house show in Sapporo, Japan by El Samurai, who would only hold it for 35 days before Shinjiro Otani would win it in Nagoya, Japan, officially August 10th, 1997, holding it for 87 days before the World Wrestling Federation demanded that Otani return the WWF Light Heavyweight Championship to them so they could launch the American-based era of the Light Heavyweight Championship in order to better, better compete with WCW and their Cruiserweight Championship. Thus, with only six belts left in it, Otani decided to simply deactivate the J-Crown Championship, returning five of those belts to their original home promotions, keeping the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Amusing because, of course, if you were watching the video a bit, you'll know that when this all started a year before, Otani had brought the UWA's championship belt into it as his contribution. But when it was all said and done, he was by this point in time, he was ready to be a New Japan big time player, thus kept there individual championship. Now this would basically do it for the J Crown Championship. The concept has not been revived since then, even though it has been almost 30 years. What's 27 years now since the initial 27 odd years. Since the initial tournament, meaning that there certainly has been time, but this is a whole new era of professional wrestling. 
they're certainly um, a less independent territory promotions running around let alone trying to get you know five different promotions minimum again they had eight championships across five promotions just because of the nature of things like the NWA and WWF creating belts that would be defended in other promotions for the sake of you know promoting good business between everybody nowadays since a lot of those deals really don't work anymore you would probably have to actually go to eight different promotions and getting eight different promotions to agree on even booking a single tournament even if now you did it as a single night thing just getting eight different promoters to agree on who's going to win I mean seven of them would have to agree to have their guy and one of their championships sacrificed to the J crown god oh. that's not something a lot of people are going to be willing to do anymore you'd have to have a really big benefit going forward for this and let's not confuse things folks at the time that it happened the j crown got a lot of publicity as we said it was riding off the coattails of the established g1 climax tournament and did in the short term benefit the business for some of these promotions involved Unfortunately, as you saw, I mean, in less than two years, the whole experiment ended. Two different belts were lost from the J-Crown, which means 25% of its value was, and prestige was lost because companies didn't want to play nice anymore. They wanted their belt back. And I don't fault the promotions. As I said, WWF was in the middle of a heated war. And war itself was struggling as an independent promotion. They needed their belt back. You know, it was business decisions. It wasn't personal. It wasn't petty. It wasn't angry. But it was what it was. Still, for the men who held the belts. Great Sasuke. Great Sasuke. Sasuke, however you pronounce it mm, sorry it's just I've I've heard a few different pronunciations for that particular name so I'm going with what works sounds good in my brain I do apologize to anybody if there is a true homebrew and official pronunciation and I am butchering it but great Satsuke Ultimo Dragon Jushin Thunder Liger these are three of the biggest names in Japanese wrestling now. These are icons and Hall of Famers. El Samurai and Shinjiro Tani have had very respected careers as well. And going back to that initial list, you also had people like Negro Casas, who is considered one of the true legends of CMLL, along with Gran Hamada, who, as we said, is not only considered a truly iconic wrestler, but whose two daughters have done a lot to uh, bring legitimacy to women's wrestling, including over here in the Western world. So, I mean, this was a big thing at the time. It did bring a lot of attention to it, and those who held the J-Crown did continue to have highly successful careers. So in the end, you can't really consider the J-Crown a failure, but you can consider it something that is probably never going to happen again, at least not on the scale that it happened at the time. I mean, yeah, you could probably get eight truly desperate, you know, can barely sell out a high school gym, you know, only tour two, three cities, promotions to get together for a tournament but it wouldn't attract the attention the J-Crown did initially and it wouldn't lead to title defenses at big shows like the J-Crown was defended against I mean again 
Ultimo Dragon came to WCW and was working in WCW while J Crown Champion. He picked up their cruiserweight title. That was a thing. And that was a big opportunity for him to come to America and show off just how good he was. Even if WCW tried to Americanize his name and call him Ultimate Dragon. But that's a story for another time. Still, we appreciate what was attempted. We respect the great matches that took place as part of the J-Crown's existence. And more importantly, I want to remind everybody, keep one eye out. Keep one eye open all times, because you never know when something like this might be attempted again, or somebody comes up with another crazy idea that, while it seems unique and seems like it wouldn't work, does go on to produce some moments that will live on in history. With this, we are going to sign off. I hope all of y'all have enjoyed your Friday rambling. I hope you look forward to the rest of March. And in the meantime, and in between times, I'm the Bardic One. I will continue to be here for you and with you as we continue to discuss everything entertainment that is awesome. Because that's how we roll. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay entertained and stay subscribed to Roulette Productions. Bye-bye, folks.